Hello out there to you. In this video, let's go over the uh, different ways of calculating GDP, sometimes called the approaches. There are three approaches that you could run into. Uh, there is what's called the value added approach, where we're going to uh, measure the amount of additional value that each part of the economy adds to uh, production. You could do the factor income approach, which is often called the income approach. So this is just adding up incomes earned from each uh, factor of production. Those are land, labor, and capital. Um, or the most commonly is the aggregate spending approach. And this is just we're going to add up spending in the economy. Okay, So um, it's just the final goods and services spending. This is the most common. This one is the one that you'll see often is C plus I plus G plus net exports. Now, um, income equals spending plus savings. Okay, so that's like a, a way to, to think about this. So, so one person's spending becomes somebody else's income. So say you go to a restaurant and you spend money on food. The, the owner of the restaurant is going to spend all of that, the, the money that you spent on the wages or the other factors that they use to produce that food and then whatever is left over as profit they get to keep for themselves which becomes their income so income and spending are actually the same thing so you would use only one of these you don't use all three of them together okay um, so if we're filling everything in it tell the problem tells us that the final product is the block homes this is the final good and service right so the final product here, final value of the sales is, is 100,000. Okay, so uh, that's the end result. That's actually this. This answer here is 100,000. Okay, so 100,000 is the answer to that. And you just explain that small, that Henry's houses is producing the final goods and services, which are uh, $100,000. Okay, now value added per firm is the difference between what it purchased as intermediate goods and what it sold the final product as. So he, that's why this is 60,000. So they follow this down here, that becomes 60,000. So um, Abby tells us right here Abby sells rocks to Billy, and then Billy sells blocks to Henry. Okay, so Abby uh, doesn't have any intermediate goods. She sold twenty thousand dollars worth of rocks, so this is her value of sales is twenty thousand. Okay, and she sold that to Billy, so that means that Billy must have bought it for twenty thousand. Okay, so. Billy's value added is the difference here. His is 20,000. And Abby's value added, she's just quarrying rocks, so it's 20,000 here. So we add up all of these to get the value added approach, which is right here. And so that would be 20,000. Plus sixty thousand, plus twenty thousand again, and we add up all those, and we get ten thousand. Sorry, a hundred thousand, not ten thousand. Hundred thousand, hundred thousand, hundred thousand. Those those equal the same amount, and that makes sense because remember, one person's one side of the the spending becomes income and that where did that production come from well it came from value added across the economy so this one is a hundred thousand all right now to add up total factor income well, we already know that the answer has to be a hundred thousand so uh all we have to do is add up everything that's in here okay so 30 plus 10 is 40 uh is fifty one thousand, and then uh, five thousand. So two thousand plus three thousand is five thousand. And then uh, we're missing some parts here. Okay, so 
we know that this has to equal 100,000. So the rent, okay, so profit is going to be the difference. Profit is what's kept by the owner. So Abby made $7,000 in profit. That means that her uh, factor payments had to be 13,000. So whatever, so this plus this is 12,500. Uh, so her rent has to be 500. Let's see if that adds up. So 11,000, oops, 11,000 plus 1,500 plus 500 is 13,000 and 13,000 is the difference between these two things so that's correct let's do the same thing here over oh, here we don't know the profit so we know that Henry sold a hundred thousand dollars worth of houses and then uh, how much did it cost Henry to, to produce those houses so this would be uh, 30 thousand plus 3,000 could have done that in my head and then uh, minus a hundred thousand. This is a difference of sixty-seven thousand. Uh, let's make sure that that's right. Let's let's add up all this here. So this is uh, two thousand dollars. And okay, so now remember we have this all has to equal a hundred thousand dollars. So let's just, we can just calculate whatever that must be there. Uh, so that's 56,000, 58,000. So 58,000. The difference between that and 100,000 is 42,000. So this number has to be 42,000. And we'll see if I was right there. Um, this is 15,000. So whatever that number is. 15,000 minus 42,000 is 27,000. I was off by, oh, I just forgot to take into account the intermediate goods, so I was still correct. Okay, so this is the answer to all of this. So we add that up, and that will be 100,000. So in, in summary, if you wanted to get the value-added approach, we're going to Add the difference between their intermediate goods and raw materials and what they sold it for. Uh, the income approach, we're going to add up the income of workers, capital owners. It's also a capital owner there. Um, and then the, the owner's share, the entrepreneurship there. We add up those four parts. Uh, and that's going to equal, it has to equal the same amount. So if you're getting different amounts, you're doing it wrong. And then the final goods and services, there's only one final producer, and that's uh, Henry's, so that's 100,000. So there we go.